Hello, Forrest. How are you? It's allergy season here in Japan, so I hope uh, things go well. Bear with me. I've come prepared just in case something happens. I'd like to start off uh, this time by reading a few lines from a poem called The Hunting of the Snark by Lewis Carroll. And this is from the preface. Just the place for a snark, the bellman cried, as he landed his crew with care, supporting each man on the top of the tide by a finger entwined in his hair. Just the place for a snark, I have said it twice. That alone should encourage the crew. Just the place for a snark, I have said it thrice. What I tell you three times is true. Well, I think for the various snarks that have been hidden in the thrill of the chase, the various clues, or various hints, I should say, um, you use repetition and reinforcement, like the bellman, to tell us what is true, what is interesting, and what is valid in the uh, story. So what I would like to do in this episode is to go through um, several examples uh, of how you use repetition and reinforcement to draw attention to important elements, uh, which could be important hints for us to use when trying to solve your puzzle. So the most striking example for me um, when I first got the hold of the book, the thing that jumped out the most to me must have been the old ladies with the pies. This, uh, to see this once in the stories is an interesting and unusual detail in itself, but to see it uh, more than once is very stri very striking example. So, on page 33 in Spanish Toy Factory, you talk about the beautiful old gray-haired lady who would break pies uh, when she would see you coming so that uh, you would be able to get more for a nickel, two pies for a nickel instead of one. Uh, this was on your way to school. You would pass the, uh, the pie factory with its uh, ovens and the fans blowing the aroma onto the sidewalk. Um, these pies here <clears throat> were uh, pineapple pies, but on page 48 with the uh, Totem Cafe caper, uh, we have another old lady, Grandma, who made cherry and apple pies, who uh, shared or at least covered for you when uh, you ate a cherry pie in the story uh, behind one of the, uh, the trees. Um, and when you had a run-in with uh, your boss, Frosty, over it. Um, so, two old, presumably gray-haired ladies, uh, two of them making pies, two of them showing sympathy for you, uh, getting around the rules uh, for your sake. Um, this, uh, you know, concentration on these details has to mean something. It can't be a coincidence. It comes back to the freedom of choice again that you had when constructing the puzzle. Out of the many stories that you have, you had enough stories to fill um, almost 200 scrapbooks. You've had enough to fill three memoirs. Uh, there must be many stories that you could use drawn that uh, haven't made any of these sources as well. And yet, in your first memoir, The Thrill of the Chase, you picked two examples, two, two chapters, two stories, which with elements that parallel themselves, parallel each other to uh, quite a degree. So this, to me, clearly is a choice that you've made for a reason that probably supports the, uh, the puzzle itself. There are um, a few other details that also uh, fall into line with this, perhaps. On page 24 in Jumpstarting the Learning Curve, 
you talk about uh, Ms. Ford in several places and in several ways, but you say that you secretly loved that old lady Ford, and then you make a point of her age being at least 40. Um, maybe. Um, I would say this is a, a reference which is deserves honorable mention. It's not uh, uh, completely in line with the example with the grandmothers and the pies, but he's yet another example of someone who you refer to as an old lady, maybe related. Uh, and on page 56 in Surviving Myself, you talk about the desserts that were served in the family. Uh, you don't mention the word pies here, but you talk about shortcakes and pineapple upside down cake, strawberry shortcake, uh, and uh, how you used to pretend with uh, uh, pieces of bread and jams that you were eating these desserts. Uh, I would give this another honorable mention for drawing attention to pies and desserts and these flavors as a theme. More reinforcement, more repetition. Um, for the example of the beautiful old gray-haired lady in the Spanish toy factory, the chapter ends with you mentioning uh, that you would find uh, her, or hope to find her grave marker and uh, slide a nickel under it. It um, seems that you are inviting us to look for such a thing, look for a grave marker. Um, on page 41 in Surviving Myself, you talk about how you would jump out your window and walk down to the cemetery and sit on uh, some guy's grave marker. A kid really has time to think in a graveyard. And as a third reference for grave markers, you have on page 94, My War for Me, the grave marker from the French Indochina War, 1947. Now, the ones on page 33 and 41 with the uh, grave marker of the gray-haired lady and the one in the cemetery north of uh, your home in Temple, uh, Temple, Texas, those to me are elements of a story that were optional. The story held together without these details, both of them. But adding these details, they reinforce each other and together reinforce the third reference of a grave marker, the one in My War for Me, which sounds um, uh, less, um, less like it was uh, a detail picked to, to just uh, support the puzzle. I, I, I really think that um, My War for Me is really the center of the whole book, um, not just for the puzzle, but in terms of um, the message that uh, I think uh, is most important to you when you write, wrote your memoir. Uh, if, if I had to um, decide which one was the primary reference and which ones are the supporting ones, I would say the grave marker from French Indochina War is the real point. And these other grave markers uh, are uh, mentioned somehow in support of this. But that's just uh, an assumption. Um, more examples. Uh, we had uh, Grandma making cherry and apple pies in the uh, Totem Cafe. On page 47, the Totem Cafe caper. Uh, and uh, page 48, 49, I should say, you have uh, her interactions with the, your boss, Frosty. Um, at the time. And in the same chapter, on page 47, just ahead of it, you have another boss, the one who drove the big, beautiful yellow Cadillac, Cadillac who saw you sitting on the, uh, on, in front of uh, Skaggs Grocery Store, who uh, canned you for what seemed to be, seemed to him, I guess, to be slacking off on the job. Um, this example is particularly interesting. You had two run-ins with two bosses in the same chapter, one right beside the other. Uh, together, um, you have, uh, it, it's not just that the stories are about the same sort of thing, uh, being fired in the one hand and almost being fired in the other hand, uh, but 
you have uh, Canyon Street mentioned for uh, the case of the, uh, the boss with the yellow, yellow Cadillac because you talk about the cars whizzing by on the streets. Yeah. And then when you get to the uh, Totem ca uh, Cafe ca um, incident with Frosty, you talk about how the washing of the pots and kettles would leave your hands white with deep canyons in them. <coughs> so um, I think here um, this is not just uh, an example of repetition and reinforcement, but this juxtaposition, that putting these two examples very close, one beside the other, uh, really reinforces um, this idea that these elements are important. Um, doing these, uh, this, or setting up the story in this way, putting these elements together may not be necessary if you were just telling a memoir in the usual sense. But having done so really um, leads me to think that, that, uh, that you are drawing attention to uh, some things which uh, may be useful hints for the puzzle itself. Um, another example which is a little less obvious in that um, the reinforcement or repetition or the connections um, are not on the surface but have to be uh, uh, worked at in order to, uh, to be seen would be the orderings in the chapters Me in the Middle and in Surviving Myself. So on page 35 in Me in the Middle, you talk about um, how you wish that your family could be together again so that you can be in the middle. And specifically, and let me read this one out just to get it absolutely right. So page 35, 35, 45, one, two, three. Okay. Uh, my brother Skippy came along two years later. Then it was my turn, followed by my little sister June. It was your turn, followed by your little sister June. There were two years between me and both of them, so I was in the middle. So you're referring to the ordering, the family ordering, or the ordering in your um, amongst. Uh, the three of you. Uh, uh, so I was in the middle, and that was significant because I felt somehow surrounded. You can laugh at that if you want to, but think of it this way. Another reference to think, a signpost. Skippy was older, so I looked up to him, and June was younger, but I couldn't look down to her because my father wouldn't allow it. Does that seem fair? My siblings are gone now, and so are my parents. It sure would be nice if they could all come back so I could be in the middle again. So sentiment, sure would be nice. And uh, thought, um, so where is this? So you can laugh at that if you want to, but think of it this way, thought. So there's some signposts here. There's some significance to this. Then in surviving myself, when we get to the incident with bedtime and the switchings. So, um, father liked Skippy best. And I knew when he got a licking, anything could happen after that. This is page 40 in uh, Surviving Myself. So I just stand there and wait for my turn at the paddle. Mom was always knitting and didn't seem to notice. And that's another... Uh, connection to something else, but I'll have to leave that for another time. And June was asleep by that time, so it never became an issue in the family. After four or five times, the spankings began to work for me, but I'm not sure Skippy ever learned. Maybe he was turning alpha. So even here, just in the choice of words, turning alpha, and we see on back, back in me in the middle, when it... Uh, so my brother Skippy came along two years later, then it was my turn. So some connections being drawn. June never got switched because she probably did everything right. She was the family pet, being both female and the youngest and all. I remember one time I made her so mad she kicked at me 
as hard as she could. I saw it coming and quickly turned my foot sideways, which made her shin catch the full impact of my cowboy boot, and it really hurt her. Father gave me a spanking for that. I suppose I should have let her just kick me in my shin if there had been time to think. Signpost. And I could have weighed the difference between uh, being kicked by my little sister and being switched by my father. I probably would have taken the switching again. Think. Do the switch. Sometimes principle is reason enough to abandon logic, no matter how much it hurts. So, switching. Switching order. Um, to me, the thing that relates these two uh, passages is attention to ordering, turning, switching. Um, the, uh, even though, if you say, if you look at um, me in the middle, Skippy was older, so I looked up to him. June was younger, but couldn't look down to her, so that means June is above you again. So it's like an ordering Skippy and June somehow both being above you. That's a switching. That's a turning. So um, I'm sure uh, there's more to be said here, but um, the, really the, the only point I want to make so far at this, at, about this example is that even though on the surface of it you might not... Um, people might not recognize uh, a surface similarity between the passages. If you think about it, if you look uh, at the use of words, if you look at the concepts involved, uh, there is a repetition and a reinforcement here, just a more subtle one. So um, there are many examples in the book, too many to, again, to list in, in a video like this. But uh, we could follow up and, and analyze the examples involving jars, bottles, cans, the mention of jarred awake uh, just after uh, the statement of the poem in Golden Me. There's also references to brown pants uh, from sliding uh, explicitly when, uh, when uh, sliding down uh, the fire escape after uh, exiting the window from Spanish class uh, or uh, slipping when milking the cow falling in a cow pat and then having to go to school that way. Both of these uh, examples have Miss Ford waiting for you, uh, or Miss Ford uh, mentioned nearby. So again, we have repetition on these elements, the brown, the, uh, the pants, uh, the seats of your pants, Miss Ford, um, and Spanish class. Other elements that appear in different locations which provide connections uh, unusual words are biddies, which we have uh, in the uh, in the uh, section "No Place for Biddies," and uh, in the uh, section "Important Literature" as well. Uh, we have mention uh, of cars in various places in various ways. Uh, windows is an interesting element in the story that appears uh, uh, from place to place. Uh, which is signposted as well. Spanish, as I mentioned before, uh, is uh, referred to in many places. And on and on. There are many, many such examples where repetition and reinforcement draws our attention to what is important. So uh, I guess uh, this episode, as well as the previous ones, are all... Um, concerned with uh, how information is organized within the text so as to draw our attention, to uh, help us figure out what is important, what sort of uh, things are there for us to analyze, understand, and connect. Um, I think perhaps the next... Um, one or two videos will continue this uh, this line and will focus on elements in the text that can uh, help to convey to us what the uh, hints are. Um, so a few more themes like this to, to be considered and then um, 
I think after that it will be time to move on to some some more uh, high-level discussions about the uh, thrill of the chase.